very, very honored to have all of you here today. This is quite the crowd. A lot of VIPs in the crowd today. Of course, donors. Uh, we couldn't be having this day without donors. We also wouldn't be having this day without our state government and the representatives and senators and other members of the state legislature who are here with us today. Members of the UVU Board of Trustees, the Foundation Board, the Alumni Board, and of course the Woodbury School of Business National Advisory Board. Many in UVU leadership and other VIPs. Two get a special call out, they're the ranking ones. Congressman John Curtis is with us today. Congressman Curtis, where there he is. Flying the UVU colors, thank you very much. And of course, Governor Gary Herbert and First Lady Jeanette Herbert. And you'll be hearing from the governor in a few minutes. As you all know, this is Veterans Day, and we want to acknowledge that today before we start the groundbreaking. First, we're going to start with an invocation offered by Elder Neil L. Anderson, an apostle of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We're so happy that you and your wife could be here with us today. We're also, after the invocation, we'll have the presentation of the colors by the Army ROTC Color Guard, along with the national anthem sung by the cadets of the Air Force ROTC. We then will have the pleasure of hearing from a service member who is also a UVU student, Army Cadet Osvaldo Ramos, who is in our Cybersecurity Master's Program. You'll be hearing from him. So I invite you all to rise for this next portion of the program. And Elder Anderson, if you would join me up here while Elder Anderson is coming. Many of you may have heard this week the news of a Utah Valley University alumnus, Air Force Staff Sergeant Cole Condiff, who is missing after a training accident on November 5th in the Gulf of Mexico. Please keep Staff Sergeant Condiff and his family in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Thank you. I'll invite us all to bow our heads. Our beloved Heavenly Father, we are humbly thankful for our many blessings, and we ask a special blessing upon this Staff Sergeant Condiff. Pray that thou will bless him, if it be thy will that we might be found and protected. We feel for his family, we ask a blessing upon them. We're thankful for this great day of freedom how grateful we are for the freedom we have, for the, the beautiful country in which we live, and for those men and women who have done so much through the decades, through the centuries, even currently, to protect this freedom and to, in very fact, keep the world free. We love them, and we pray that they may feel our thanksgiving for them. We're thankful on this special occasion for the generosity of so many that would allow this building to be built. We're thankful for Utah Valley University for its open doors, for the faculty, the administration, all those who serve here and bless these students that they might learn and grow and become what they should become. And we pray a blessing upon this university that there always will be a spirit of giving, of unselfishness, and of, of uh, safety and peace. And that, that people who attend here might feel this is a special place. We are thankful for this building that we honor today and especially for Scott and Karen Keller for their generosity and their unselfishness. We ask a blessing upon them, upon their family, their children and grandchildren. And we pray that the events of this day may be in keeping with this spirit of thanksgiving that we have at this time of year, that we may realize that all good things come from thee and that we love thee with all our heart. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Twilight's 
gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Well, good day, everyone. I'm glad that you guys were able to make it out here today. Welcome to UVU. It's a beautiful day, as they were mentioning before. Um, I'd like to introduce myself just a little bit. My name is Osvaldo Ramos. I go by Oz. It's just easier for everyone. And yes, I'm a cadet in the Army ROTC program. I'm currently studying a master's in cybersecurity, and I'm looking forward to learning a lot from this program. Um, I just wanted to go over some of the few things today of why Veterans Day is so important to me and what, what it means to veterans who have served and that are still serving in this capacity. Now, this day symbolizes a special trait for all those people that are currently serving in the Guard, active duty, or in reserve functions. Now, it's all based on special, like selfless service, and it comes from that ability for us to give more of ourselves, to give back to the public that keeps us strong, supports us, and is always there for us. Now, I'd like to emphasize on that trait currently. Here at UVU, we have th uh, 3,800, sorry about that, 3,088 students who are currently using benefits here as students and in capacities looking, looking to get their degrees. Now, these are individuals serving through the nation, through the National Guard, active duty, or in reserve components. And honestly, I can say that this country really attracts a lot of people from different countries because of, you know, the, the freedoms that they're afforded here. Now, today is a day that we honor the brave men and women that have come before us. And for the fallen, for those that have forgotten, the unsung heroes, and also the people that, you know, train to fight each and every day to keep America free. Now, it's through their sacrifice that we're able to stand here today, and I'm really grateful that we're given this opportunity, especially to be part of the ROTC program, not only to represent this, this university, but others around us as well. And it's also a great time for us serving in the Army to show what, what the standard is, right? What it's expected of us and how the public looks at us, looks to us towards defending the nation's standards. And we're thankful for that. And so I just wanted to say thank you to all for coming out here today. And we, we hope that everything works out for you well. And thank you for this new building that will give us the opportunity to grow and continue to grow our skills to be better leaders for you in the future. So thank you and have a pleasant day. So this new building today is going to help us prepare for the next generation of Utahns to continue an economic boom that we've enjoyed. And it's been building under the momentum of government during government Her Governor Herbert's tenure. Governor Herbert grew up just a few blocks from here. He served as Utah County Commissioner from 1990 to 2004, was elected Lieutenant Governor in 2005. In 2009, he was appointed the Governor of Utah and has been re-elected to two four-year terms. Plus, he also served six years in the Utah Army National Guard. Governor Herbert has presided over the longest period of positive economic growth the state of Utah has ever seen. He's been a staunch supporter of UVU and of higher education in general. We've been very fortunate to have his vision and our support leading the state. Governor, we're glad you could be with us today for this momentous occasion. The podium's yours. Thank you, well, thank you, Scott. 
Uh, Jeanette and I are honored to be with you here today on this momentous occasion. And again, uh, um, as we see the progress that Utah Valley University has made just over in the last uh, few years, but I'm old enough to remember when it was nothing here. And we had the Utah Technical College down in Provo, and uh, I've told President Taminas that when I was in third grade up here at Westmore Elementary School, we used to come down to what was called the sand dunes here, and we would catch lizards, take them back and scare the girls in third grade. So uh, I have some fond memories here in many different uh, ways of, of this campus and this school and what it does for our great state. I appreciate uh, Cadet Ramos in talking about so this kind of a, uh, a double ed, uh, celebration today, not only for the Scott Keller building, but it's Veterans Day. And I had the opportunity to serve, and uh, I, I can tell I'm a better governor because I first served in the military. And probably a lesson to be learned because you don't ever know what's around the next corner. And uh, who would have ever thought, my high school buddies are still wondering, he's the governor. Uh, that I'm the commander in chief someday, and so the fact that I served in the military is uh, turned out to be a very much a blessing for me. We have 160,000 living veterans in Utah today, and I don't know how many. If you are a veteran, would you please stand up so we can recognize you? Thank you. We appreciate what you stand for, your inspiration to us, and uh, your sacrifice and service is not forgotten. With that, let me just mention, uh, as, uh, as a lifetime resident of Orem, I've had the opportunity to see this campus grow and progress in a significant way. It's now um, the largest university we have in the state. Certainly under President Domenes' leadership, uh, it's probably the most dynamic and enthusiastic campus we have here in the state today. And uh, a lot of great things are taking place here and it's just a wonder to behold. And We do have a lot to thank uh, the legislature for seeing the vision, for previous presidents, faculty members, students, all coming together to see what we have here today. And um, it's been uh, a work of many people coming together and seeing the vision and then putting their efforts together to accomplish the vision. I'll just mention a couple of things that uh, may be bear on today. Um, it was mentioned by Scott that uh, the longest period of positive economic expansion is the past 10 years we've had. I came in at the depths of the Great Recession. Uh, but we determined to set goals, like most people would want to do, goals, and then how, in fact, what are the steps necessary to accomplish the goals. And the goal is to become the best performing economy in America and a premier uh, national and international business destination. And that literally has been fulfilled. That's happened because of good policy that we have in place here, of tax rates, competitive tax rates, regulation, reform, and efficiency in government. But the private sector, which we see people here today that are making this happen because of their success in the private sector, giving money back to a very important aspect of success, and that is education. It's very hard to have good prosperity, good quality of life, good economic growth if you don't have an educated, talented labor force. And we have both of those here in the great state of Utah, which is helping to fuel our economic expansion. A well-educated uh, workforce is uh, absolutely a necessity. And again, part of having an educated uh, workforce is having uh, skills that align up with the demands of the marketplace. What's very good about Utah Valley University is the skills that they teach and what's being learned here in a significant way align up with the demands of the marketplace. So education success equals economic success. Uh, I'll just give you an example. This was mentioned earlier, but Utah Valley University's Woodbury School of Business now in the state of Utah produces 40% of all business graduates entering the Utah workforce each year from all of the state schools. So a disproportionate number of business is coming out of this university. Uh, again, my good friends, the Woodburys are here, and I've known them for a long time. We go back in our real estate careers together. But uh, again, the Woodbury School of Business has achieved some remarkable status in that regard. It's because of their connections with the business community. There is a, a relationship there that we have with the entrepreneurs out there. 
And it's also an example for industry certifications such as CFA, CFP, CPA, and Six Sigma uh, that's helping us to, in fact, deal and produce the, the skills that the mar marketplace wants to have. Another example is the WCF Buckner Insurance Partnership, which is partnering with the university to provide significant financial resources and industry, industry expertise uh, to train the next generation of risk management and insurance experts to support organizations, individuals with their risk management and insurance needs. The list goes on and on, but you can see that they're on cutting edge. They're, in fact, doing things that are needed in the marketplace and finding great success. Uh, the business students are not only engaging and getting a good edu education, but they're anxiously, anxiously engaged in learning opportunities. For example, 1,600 students per year engage in consulting projects, business competitions, industry certifications, entrepreneurship ventures, internships, venture capital evaluations, among many others. So the student population here is not only learning, but they're engaging in the marketplace too, over and above their education. And last but not least, let's just recognize the great faculty that we have here. Again, the, the, we have just wonderful people that are here giving their time and talent to teach the rising generation uh, the skills necessary to compete. Uh, for example, in the Woodbury School, we have a faculty member, Dr. Ron Miller, who is training students in applied business statistics. These students are so good at this, so they're being taught here, They've been tapped by government officials in Ghana to, in fact, do statistic training for the uh, non-government uh, organizations that are found in Ghana, so helping Ghana lift themselves up out of poverty. And the Woodbury business faculty of uh, Kerry Wasden and Mark Charrington have led our students in the highest pass rate in the nation on the prestigious Chartered Financial Analyst exam. So our students are achieving very well here. Well, let me just conclude. I wouldn't, I'd be remiss of not mentioning my good neighbor, uh, Dr. Norman Wright. I watched him as a little kid growing up, and uh, his curiosity and his interest in education has now come full cycle now that he's the dean of the Woodbury School of Business. And so I've seen Norm develop, and I've seen the school develop, and the Woodbury School of Business develop, and that's really what that's all about, the opportunity to be better than you were by having an opportunity to learn and progress. And that's what Utah Valley University stands for. To the Kellers, we offer our heartfelt congratulations to others who've helped uh, make this a success today. I'll conclude by quoting Winston Churchill, and one of Scott's favorite politicians. Winston Churchill said, we shape our buildings, thereafter they shape us. So today as Woodbury School embarks on a new chapter in its history and uh, this is a new groundbreaking, I'm confident this new building is going to help shape the future of the students here and our business opportunities here in the state of Utah so that we'll remain the best place in America and maybe the world to have, do business, certainly the best place to, to live and to raise a family. So, so thank you once and all. I also would like to give my thanks to our veterans today. It's a, it's a day that uh, I remember a lot of my heritage, uh, many people who went before me who served in the military and helped us protect our country so we could sit here today and be able to uh, have this type of a meeting and be able to celebrate uh, Utah Valley University. I just want to take a minute and talk about, uh, for a second, re-envisioning the front of this campus because that's what this uh, project is all about. And I'm so excited about it. And as we watched the video today, a number of our students said that about re-envisioning this side of the campus. Because when you look at this side of the campus, this is this particular building, the Woodbury School of Business. It was one of the original bu buildings that was built here in 1977. And so as we have the largest business school, they're still operating in that same structure that they had then. And if you can imagine, each of our students only has about 12 square feet to be able to learn in. And so this building is going to change all that. So hopefully look in your program, see those renderings, and see what's coming to this campus as you can see the excitement that's building for this new structure. So this project is 180,000 square feet. 
and 160,000 of it will be the business building, which will actually connect and connect into this old one by a concourse and go south into this parking lot. And as you all know, a parking lot is just a building waiting to happen. And so that's what we have here today. And uh, we're excited to put it in there. There'll be a second piece, which will be the gateway project, which will go over the middle concourse to, to change the way this whole plaza looks like in here. And so this project will circle around and uh, with the, the roundabout being the centerpiece. Uh, this project uh, is, is exciting from a number of aspects as we are planning it. It's been uh, designed under high performance standards, so it's going to be ultra efficient. Uh, it's one of the things that we pride ourselves here at Utah Valley University is, is being green in our facilities and how those operate. It's going to have uh, academic learning communities. And I know that sounds pretty exciting because what that means is our students and our faculty will come together in areas that they can all learn in. Faculty offices will be in areas that, stu that our students will be studying in. And so we have uh, 30 classrooms that will be in this facility and 205 offices. And so uh, as, as you envision this, think about what that means for our students because that's what this is all about. This is all about student success and making sure that our students can go forth and do the things that we're training them to do. Now with that said, just to get to this point, there's a number of people that we need to thank because when you get to the point where you're actually breaking the ground, that means the plans are done. Right now the bid is out and uh, there's a, a lot of people who have helped us with this. And so from the Division of Facilities and Construction Management, Jim Russell is our director and we want to thank him for all he's done as well as Clint Bunnell his, who has worked on that project. So round of applause for them. They're sitting there in the back. Um, our architects. Uh, Method Studio, who's done a phenomenal job in this building, uh, Joseph Smith and Todd Kelsey, who's the principal architect. I don't know if I've seen, they're right there in the back as well. Give them a round because those plans are great. And then, of course, our own facilities folks who've uh, have really learned about building buildings and they do a phenomenal job. Frank Young and all of his staff as well as two specialty consultants, Steve Clark and Jane Hausman, we'd like to thank them. And just uh, a special thanks to all our donors, to the state of Utah, especially our legislative body who's uh, helped make this happen. Uh, it, it, it takes everybody to make a building like this happen when you start talking about a $75 million project. We want to thank all of them. Thank you, and let's have a great groundbreaking. Well, I love what Val had to say, uh, particularly about the connectivity that it takes to make a building like this happen. And that applies not only to the construction, but it also applies to what's going to happen within this building once we get it done. And I couldn't be more excited because we've been looking at kind of our human resource plan and the folks who are coming in this fall, and we found that there's nowhere to put them. So they're all going into double offices probably, and we'll kick some people out and put some people in and scrunch together and make it happen for the next two years. And that's the blessing of today is that I can promise the new people coming in that it's just for two years. And so I'm very grateful for the support of so many, including those in our legislature, the donors that you see seated before you today, for our administration, for our team members that are mostly over here on our left, but a few on our right as well who are making really great things happen. And then in particular, I'm grateful to our students because our students are the ones who are here that we're doing this for so that they can have new opportunities and new horizons. But what it's going to take and what we intend to do in this building plays on that theme of connectedness. And so this building will be a place where the business community can come together with our students and with our faculty to create amazing opportunities, additional consulting projects, additional industry certifications, additional internships, opportunities to learn and grow and to apply the theory that they're learning in the classroom to the world of business so that when they enter that world of business, they will enter shovel ready. And so we're very excited about that. I'd like to thank each of you who are here today, and there are too many to, to name, appreciate our National Advisory Board members who are here, our donors, particularly grateful for the Woodburys who are here and who believed in us many years ago before I arrived. Maybe if I'd been here, they wouldn't have believed, but appreciate their ongoing support over the years. 
We're grateful for each of you for being here in attendance today. I know we're anxious to get shovels in the ground. I know we're anxious to hear for pre from President Tuminas. So let me turn the time over to her now. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dean Wright. I just uh, removed my coat and I want you to all to know I'm freezing. Uh, <laughs> I grew up in the Philippines and Singapore and uh, it's always warm and humid and this is really freezing for me. And I also did that for a second reason. Is Miss Rachel Parcell here? She here? Could you please stand up? I did that because I'm wearing a dress that she designed. I've never met uh, Rachel, but she's an alumna of Utah Valley University, and we do want you to complete your degree, so we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Thank you all for being here on a historic occasion for Utah Valley University. I want to say again that, that this is historic because we are building a building that's going to be a game changer for this university. It is not simply because we are in the business of higher education or we're educating students in business. We are in the business of hope. We at Utah Valley University believe, strongly believe, in the potential of every individual that you can come as you are with all your strengths, your doubts, your weaknesses, your confidence, your nonsense or your lack of nonsense. And we will work with you and we will help you and we will hold you accountable and we will hold ourselves accountable. And I, that's the reason I came to Utah and that's the reason I came to this university. And I want to repeat my thanks. We had a luncheon earlier, but many of you, including those who are sunbathing up there, Many of you were not at the luncheon, but we did thank all of our donors there, and I want to repeat those thanks. Thank you to our donors, our government leaders, our legislature, the National Advisory Board of the Woodbury School of Business, our Board of Trustees, and all of the friends of UVU. This building is what I call space for the 21st century. I worked at Microsoft before coming to UVU. And one of the things that struck me is our need for 21st century space. A little bit of color, a little bit of fun, places where the movement of people happen naturally, where faculty and students can communicate and collaborate, where you can plug in a device on a wall and see something pop up, where you can write on walls. We're gonna allow students to write on walls because walls will be writable. All of that is exciting and all of that will influence the way students learn. And our students are amazing. I have had, in the past year, I've been president for 14 months. I've interacted with students, including those who are in the Wolverine Fund, which is a private equity fund, and I've done private equity on Wall Street. These students are very talented. They do due diligence on companies and they co-invest. I've, I've in, uh, interacted interacted with our students through the Reed Holiday Lecture Series, also through the Enactus Competition, which is a social entrepreneurship competition. In this new building, the students will have spaces for innovation and collaboration, and it will be amazing. So I am here in order today to officially say that we are going to name this building and I need all of you to shout. This is really important. I, I hope that we've all had lunch and we have energy. Uh, we're not going to do any dancing, but we will all shout. Are, are we ready in the back? OK. To my count of three, two, one, we're going to do this. OK. Ready? One, two, three. Three. There it is. And before I introduce uh, Scott Keller and Karen Keller, I would like to have all members of the Keller family please stand. Children and grandchildren, aunts and uncles, cousins, if any are here. Thank you. I, I would like you to know that the story of this building is not just about Scott C. and Karen Keller, but it is also about you, in that there is a family story, there is a work story, there is a value story and a character story that I hope in your family 
you'll keep telling over and over again to inspire one another to do great things. I now have the pleasure of introducing Scott C. Keller, who is, by the way, a true Wolverine at heart. He may not have known it uh, a year or two ago, but he is a Wolverine. Over the past 35 years, Scott Keller has become one of the largest single private apartment owners in the Western United States, specializing in the acquisition and management of thousands of multi-family units. His personal investment portfolio has included retail centers, senior housing, private equity investment, a home construction company, Keller Luxury Homes, I know who to talk to when I need a luxury home, and student housing, including the Wolverine Crossing uh, uh, here at UVU. Let's, let's do that again. Woo! <laughs> um, west of the UVU campus. Scott serves on several boards and actively supports many political candidates, philanthropic causes, and charitable organizations. As a young man, Scott was raised in Las Vegas. Nevada and worked many years guiding the whitewater rafting tours down all major western rivers, including the Colorado, through the Grand Canyon for western river expeditions. Today, Scott is married to Karen Hale Keller, with whom he has five children and 15 grandchildren. He enjoys snow skiing, mountain and road biking, and frequent trips to Lake Powell with family and friends on his houseboat named Location, location, location. <laughs> I hope that's not one of your children's middle names. Um, I also know, this is not in, in what the paragraph I was given today, Scott can do numbers in his head. And, and that's an amazing talent. And I also know that Scott is the kind of person who can inspire people. I have seen him do that here with high potential leaders at UVU. So please join me in extending a very warm welcome to Scott C. Keller, our special guest today and giant of the community. And Karen, would you please stand also as Scott walks up. I was told 200 people. I think there's five times that many here. Oh, yeah. But between the Woodberries and the Kellers, maybe that's half. <laughs> you, you can always tell a Woodberry, you just can't tell them much. Same goes with you, honey. <laughs> I've invested in, in uh, a number of private equities, one is, of which is Woodberry. And, and it's done very well. If, if you're looking to invest in private equity, I highly recommend you go to Woodbury because those guys really know what they're doing. I attended an annual meeting a year ago and Rick was up there telling how well they did on the sale of this one property. And I realized I was the buyer of that property. <laughs> so it's a real pleasure to be connected to the Woodberries. <laughs> to be on our good side. <laughs> Don't get on the bad side of those guys, let me tell you. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you wonderful leaders, ecclesiastical, government, chief and staff, the state of Utah, um, uh, the president of this wonderful university, uh, the uh, military, the Air Force, and the Army and all of you wonderful business leaders. If my dad could only see me now. If you ever wanted to say that? <laughs> this green jacket, by the way, I didn't just come from Augusta. <laughs> I didn't come from the Masters. I had this jacket made and for the very reason that today is Wolverine Day and we are Wolverines, and I wore my jacket to be proof of that. This Open Policy Campus is providing wonderful opportunities for some that may not be able to go or it would be more difficult for them to come. It is a campus that is diversified. Proof of that is Vice President Scott Cooksey as he introduces 
those on the National Advisory Board in 1999 and introduces other vice presidents. Where is he? It's right there. He's got <laughs> we love you, Scott. It's wonderful. Uh, I want to acknowledge my family that is here. <clears throat> that has <clears throat> inspired me and encouraged me to do better and to do good things. First of all, my parents, who my mother worked her entire life. I came home from elementary school and she was never home. Uh, she worked and uh, I never associated ham, hock, and beans with economics, but I think it might have had something to do with it. My father had rental property, and I worked on those rental properties and uh, cleaned out everybody's garbage and painted redwood fences and mowed lawns and worked till early in the morning till late at night, and uh, then I'd come home and do math problems. And none of those things I appreciated, but the fact is my father gave me life, my parents gave me life, taught me a work ethic, taught me math skills, and inspired me to a career path. When Karen and I first got married, the insecurity of not knowing if you could pay your bills was a real live thing, and so I diversified and started with buying rental property. After we were married, just a year and a half, and added one or two every other year or two thereafter. So Karen, was the one cleaning out all those vacant units without pay. And, uh, and my boys were mowing lawns, but they made more money than I did. <laughs> and uh, those experiences are part of what build our characters and, and uh, make us anything that might be perceived as good today. <clears throat> so my father inspired me to a career path. Um, we sometimes forget where we are inspired and how we are taught and from whence those things come that help build our own characters. I love this university and become so. In the last 12 or 13 years, we've owned Wolverine Crossing and it's, it was a very difficult property to invest in to figure out and make work, and it's working well now. Uh, but those first six years were pretty difficult. But I bought on the basis that the campus was 26,000 students, and it would grow. And today it's 41,000 students. That's just amazing to me, and so consequently we have more heads on beds and we can pay the bills a little easier. And so we're, we're grateful for the growth and development of, of UVU and its leadership. And we have become very fond of everything UVU. Five of our children attended or graduated here at UVU. I hope that the focus on those students that attend this campus and this new building will establish the same kind of values that our families influence on us mentally, socially, uh, spiritually, um, socially, this is a place that students will come and participate in the n new constructed building here to learn to think, to establish a career, to meet other people and learn social skills, um, to establish relationships with those that will be mentors and teachers to them throughout their entire lives. It's not just a building, but it's a, of sticks and bricks or, or brick and mortar, but it's a place to establish oneself early in life to decide what goals they want to have and then go for it. That which one persists in doing becomes easier. 
not that the nature of the thing has changed, but that our ability to complete the task has been enhanced. Students that are coming to this university will know that it's not going to be easy. But as they persist, anything that they can perceive can be achieved. And they will come here and learn and establish a foundation in which they can move on in life with their own careers and with their own families. <clears throat> this building, as stated, is going to be more than a physical structure. It's going to be a safe and inspiring escape from the world where students and faculty can find inspiration, direction, encouragement, build confidence, dream mighty dreams, create cutting edge ideas that will change the world. My hope is that they will gain more from just coming to class and coming to a beautiful building, but that they will develop character. A formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. That, in addition to the core classes, will push themselves to explore to limits of their higher imaginations. This building will house a library of resources and access to tutors and mentors and opportunities to find answers to most anything a student would ever seek in the entrepreneurship of their goals, economics, accounting, finance, management, investment, and business. I'm oftentimes asked what things I have learned in the cultivating of any degree of success that I have experienced. And there are numerous. I tell them from an investment angle, such as investment such as that I have chosen as a career, is to borrow all the money that you can. Why? To leverage and to invest and not use it foolishly. To, number two, always pay it back on the terms that you've agreed and pay it back on time. Why? So you can borrow more and do it again. Number three, always have a good tan. Because the tan implies that you're enjoying the fruits of your labors, that you can go golfing, you can go to Lake Powell. And it says, this guy's kind of got it figured out, even if you own a suntan bed at your house. I often tell people, I'm not the author of this quote, but live like most people won't for five or 10 years and you can live like most people can't for the rest of your life. That's an eternal principle of sacrifice. Live on less and invest the rest. Live within our means. You don't have to make a lot of money to be happy. You just have to live on less, not spend all that you have. Often I'm asked, so how do you deal with risk? How do you know what the future will bring? Well, we've had a hundred recessions and a hundred recoveries. That gives me hope that in any downturn, you simply buckle down, grab an oar and start pulling hard and you'll get through it. A hundred recessions and a hundred recoveries gives me hope that this too will pass. There are dips in the economy. But don't fear a dip. Be careful, be cautious, be provident. Live within your means. Stay within a budget and respect it. We went through a difficult 2008 and 2009. My company didn't lay off a single person. We were building a new house that we were two and a half times over budget. We never pulled off one day because you identify ways to if you can't drive revenue, you can control midline expenses. And lo and behold, our cash flows actually went up. By looking inside the box, looking internally at what you can do, knowing that occupancy in my business wasn't going up, 
it was going down. Revenues were going down and values were dropping on paper. But you don't lose if you don't sell. You just simply hang on and get to work and start moving. I found, as we've often heard the quote, the harder I work, the luckier I got. I've changed that <clears throat> to the harder I work, the more blessed we became. And with that is a wonderful feeling that there are consequences and a ripple effect of the efforts that we put forth. <clears throat> I worked for Western River Expedition, my brother in the audience. He's 82. <laughs> he's a lot older than I am. And he looks good and he skis and he's active and he races fast cars and drives fast cars and he's True. my measure <laughs> to make sure I'm doing okay for a while. But I was a river guide and I would often ask usually these well-to-do people that were on these river trips how I could become somewhat of what they have become in the way of success. And this one man who built, built skyscrapers in Dallas, Texas says, I'll tell you in two words and I'll tell you, and if you apply this principle in your life, I promise you, you'll look me up someday and thank me for making you a millionaire. That wasn't really my goal. I just wanted to be successful. And he says, the two words are obligate yourself. And I've thought about what that has meant. And over the years, it appears to me to mean differently than others might, what it might mean to them, is to do things that you wouldn't ordinarily do. To accept responsibility, to serve, to work a little harder, to do a little better. And so I leave you with these considerations to apply basic fundamentals. It might even be getting to bed early so you can get up early. To, to be prompt, to do what you say you're going to do, to keep your word, to be fair and to be honest, to be expedient, to have a sense of urgency. In a business deal, you don't always have to win everything leave a little something on the table. Not a lot, just, just a little bit. But you don't have to have the deal of the century. Just get close so that everybody comes out feeling good about things. And don't be complacent. I leave you with this one last story. Mitt Romney told a story. I worked with him closely in 2012. That when he asked his father, when he was the CEO of American Motors, AMC in Detroit, Michigan, how he could possibly compete with car giants Ford, Chrysler, and GMC. This was before his father became the three-term governor of Michigan. His father's response was, there is nothing as vulnerable as entrenched success, meaning complacency. And when we become complacent, Many things go awry in our lives, <clears throat> whether it be in athletics or academics, um, in our personal lives, in uh, voting. When we're laid back and cavalier and a little carefree in our thinking, it's when you have a no-name Apple that comes along and steals market share from IBM and these fat cats at IBM are wondering, who are they and what the heck has just happened? And even in our personal lives and spiritually, we can lose blessings or a simply market share in our lives that can affect us adversarially speaking. I have learned, as we have all learned, good habits in bad times and bad habits in good times. So I encourage us all to see what we can do just a little bit better in our lives as we prepare and assist those that are younger in our generation that will be the next leaders of the world. 
I believe that when performance is measured, performance improves. And when performance is measured and reported, performance improves exponentially. I believe in those principles. I hope those are principles that some will incorporate here at this new business building. Thank you for your support. Thank you for my children and my wife and her wonderful support as we have built a, a, an empire that uh, I could not have done without her. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Well, I was not expected to say anything, but so I just, where is a teleprompter and a good speech when you need it? <laughs> um, first of all, I just want to, um, I've been just different emotions. I didn't think this was that big of a deal, but I'm thinking this looks kind of a bit like a big deal. <laughs> and um, we have had several cute crocheted pillows sent to Scott embroidered I'm kind of a big deal <laughs> so, but please don't send any more <laughs> um, and thank you for this opportunity to say a few words I usually uh, always am good at cleaning up after Scott and <laughs> I'll try and just be real brief but um, We've been so fortunate um, to rub shoulders with so many wonderful people in the last few years. And little did I know, I never dreamed that anything like this would come to fruition. And uh, I have a lot of people to thank besides this beautiful guy in the green. <laughs> and I wore a red just to get a segue for Christmas. <laughs> um, I just, like I say, I feel so blessed to be able to rub shoulders with so many wonderful people. And um, today being Veterans Day, which also I have to, Norm and Scott to thank for changing this when he said the groundbreaking was going to be November 6 I thought oh darn I'm not my girls and I are going to be out of town and thinking again not that big of a deal and the very next day he called and says hey Karen we've changed it to November 11th and it's best because it's Veterans Day in fact when we came into the roundabout I go oh my goodness look at all those flags this is beautiful what what an event you know and I'm looking over at Scott thing and he's going yeah they're they're kind of making a big deal out of this. <laughs> and I said honey it's Veterans Day <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I, I was, we were fortunate enough to be to um, the Sutherland um, Gala Saturday night. And they touched upon three of my most favorite things that are near and dear to my heart. And that is faith, family, and freedom. And uh, like I say, I feel very blessed to be able to rub shoulders with so many. And even those, all of you here today, um, even though we don't know all of you, we know that it's important. This event is important enough for you to be here. And um, being on the UVU board, the Woodbury School of Business, I've seen so many and listened to so many of you mentor and teach and care so deeply. And we were under the watch of President Mount Holland when we first arrived here. And like Scott said, five of our children and some of our um, son and daughter-in-laws attended here. And now hopefully 15 plus grandchildren and nieces and nephews, it just goes on. And, and uh, how lucky and blessed they are and now we've got President Tumenez, and is she contagious? Her enthusiasm is so contagious, 
and she's made me love the color green. <laughs> and she's just been such a delight, an amazing woman. And her husband and family, we've just grown to love. But um, with all these students that are coming here and how important education is and how this empower, empowerments that is, um, it's a process, it's a process to become strong and confident people who we need in this world today to, to carry the torch to go forward. And I just want to pre um, express my appreciation to the government officials and the ecclesiastical officials and and all of our family and friends. We, we love you and we appreciate you for being a support here. And to all those others that have donated, we it's just fun to be able to be in that group. Thank you so much. very impressive. We have some mighty machines over there. And so I think Scott Keller and I, let's do some real groundbreaking. <laughs> <laughs>